Since man landed on the moon, countless conspiracy theories have surfaced all over the web. Some so virulent, they spread like a virus, seeping into many areas of the media. Some of these theories, predictably, hold more water than others. Some claim we never went to the moon. This regardless of the proof that has continued to surface over the years. NASA claims to have lost the telemetry from the moon landings also. The motive behind this claim is unclear. Yet no matter how unlikely, they continue to claim that it has been missing for decades. Conspiracy theorists often overlook the astonishing contributions which NASA has also made to modern society. Yet some theories actually claim a literal polar opposite of moon landing conspiracies. These not only agree that we did indeed land, walk, and even drive on the moon, but claim we have been back in secret and to explore a rather astonishing thing. According to numerous sources, the most compelling of said claims began on YouTube, with the release of some extraordinary CGI footage of a claimed moon landing and the exploration of a simply gigantic alien spacecraft. Due to the moon being so difficult to reach, and the fact that anything which either crashed, landed, or was possibly even abandoned on the moon, even billions of years ago, would have been preserved in an incredible condition. In April 2007, videos began appearing on YouTube under the username RetireDafB, telling the extraordinary story of a supposed Apollo 20, a secret lunar mission that had discovered the existence of intelligent alien life on the moon. Then, on May 23, 2007, Italian UFOologist Luca Scantaburlo managed to secure an interview with an individual who claimed to be the creator of the channel, a man by the name of William Rutledge, who later claimed to be, in fact, himself a retired secret American astronaut, who at the time was living in Rwanda. Rutledge claimed to be the commander of the Apollo 20 crew and to be the owner of the retired DAFB account. However, the interviewer never met Rutledge in person, as the interview was conducted over Yahoo Messenger. During the interview, however, Rutledge claimed that Apollo 20 was a top-secret mission, launched in mid-August 1976 from Vandenberg Air Force Base near Santa Barbara, California. He also claimed that it was conducted jointly by the United States and the former Soviet Union. He also alleged that other missions were made by American astronaut Leona Snyder, a now-established fictitious persona, and former Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov, the first human to perform a spacewalk. The purported landing site of the mission was near Gaillot Crater, a feature near the much larger Del Porte Crater. Rutledge said the videos show that he and Leonov discovered the remains of an ancient lunar civilization. He also said they brought back artifacts to Earth for study, including a hibernating female humanoid. It is a story which we found highly compelling. Why did we never go back to the moon? Undoubtedly, man's greatest achievement, a feat which has apparently never been attempted again. There are many conspiracy theories surrounding the moon missions, some for good reasons and others not so. A mission to the moon, or indeed Mars, should be an experience which unites humanity under a common goal. Yet, alas, this unity rarely occurs. It is a well-known fact that knowledge is power, yet unfortunately this fact can often breed deceit and deception. For it is believed by some that knowledge only makes one powerful when it is concealed from another, regardless of whether this always be accurate within reality. Because of this system of accumulating and protecting power, space-going nations have gone to tremendous efforts to conceal things from the public, and indeed each other. The United States government, for example, demands astronomers, astronauts, and many other workers at NASA sign an oath of confidentiality. Upon breaking this oath, you could face a conviction of treason, a crime which carries the death penalty. However, regardless of this, over the past few years, more and more individuals from around the world have bravely began to blow the whistle on these secrecies. Dr. Ken Johnston, former director of NASA's Department of Photographic Evidence, has stated that during his stay at the agency, he was able to see original photos of countless ruins, pyramids, and intact temples all resting upon the moon. 
Not only are there now a number of independent testimonies, made by numerous figures from within these space agencies and the accompanying programs, confessing to the concealment of ancient ruins on the moon's surface, but we also have compelling physical evidence of such structures, including photographs released by NASA themselves. One was snapped by the Apollo 17 astronauts in 1972. Subsequently uploaded to the official NASA website, it was originally labeled as overexposed. However, as technology has evolved and computer software has become more inept at refining images, it has revealed something amazing. Along with apparent pyramidal structure, clearly seen within this image, some investigators have also highlighted a possible monolith in the foreground. Was Space Odyssey trying to tell us something? Predictably, many people have come forward attempting to discredit this discovery. Yet fortunately for us, in the December of 2008, the Hubble Space Telescope took some extremely intriguing images of its own. Images which seem to corroborate the once overexposed Apollo photo. Do these images actually show ancient ruins upon the surface of the moon? If this is the case, how did they get there? Or more importantly, who could have built them? Are these relics proof of an ancient space-going civilization? Or maybe extraterrestrial activity? Regardless of how they got there, we find their existence highly compelling and could be perceived as a possible motive for turning the space programs into black projects. Maybe we did go back to the moon. It's just most were never told about it. After all, knowledge is power. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. What did the Apollo 10 astronauts experience on their legendary transit far beyond Earth contact as they ventured around the dark side of the moon? Our often illuminated satellite is to our perspective here on Earth seemingly rotating on a fixed axis, thus only one side of the moon has ever been seen from Earth. Additionally, although known as the dark side, it does indeed receive sunlight. In May 1969, Apollo 10 was the fourth manned mission in the United States Apollo program. It was a real-world or real-space operational training mission, an in-depth research and preparation rehearsal in planning of the eventual moon landing. Successfully testing componentry, procedural drills, along with several contingencies for if something went wrong. The mission was completely successful, doing all short of an actual lunar landing. What we find the most enigmatic part of the mission, however, the audio transcripts of what even the astronauts termed alien music was heard by all aboard as they lost contact with Houston as they went behind the moon. I didn't need to keep it sound on spacey, didn't it? Did you hear that? That whistling sound? That's what we're talking about, those screams from some... Alien. Supporting the theory of an alien transmission are recent discoveries of pulses leaving our planet from several locations, such as Antarctica, Bosnia, Peru, etc. The perplexing purpose for false doors and so forth. Furthermore, due to the sheer mass of rock that would be between the Earth and the far side, if the Moon is receiving any directed transmissions, it's stationing strategically perfect to not only observe us, but avoid detection. The other cause for the music, a personal hypothesis, is that instead of the static we receive upon our television, residually from the Big Bang, outer of space, especially away from our own statically generating planet, this noise could, we believe, indeed sound like an eerie melody. Additionally, due to redshift and the Doppler effect, sound would warp through vast space-time travel, even from our closest neighbor, Proxima Centauri. Yet indeed, if of intelligent and extraterrestrial origin, it would be received as pulse of sound, having moments of silence distorted from interstellar travel. However, who knows what advanced technological composition could be possible? The truth is out there, or maybe it's here already. There are many conspiracy theories pertaining to hidden ancient relics which can be found upon our moon. Conspiracies plague not only the known visit to it, 
but also the possible past visitation by a now lost civilization. A number of studies, including some here upon our channel, have exposed not only theories, but valid proofs to support the hypothesis of ancient ruins not only being present on the moon, but ancient lunar ruins having actually been visited in secret operations by NASA and other space agencies. Not only aware of said sites, but accused of studying them in secret. However, a discovery has been made which has seemingly been a lot more difficult, apparently impossible to keep concealed. Thus, it has been exposed after having been discovered by a group of intellectuals at the Baylor University, featured within a study published in the journal Geophysical Research Letters. They combine data from NASA's Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory GRAIL, and the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter LRO, after finding a huge blob lurking over a hundred miles beneath the South Pole Itkin Basin. Imagine taking a pile of metal five times larger than the Big Island of Hawaii and burying it underground. That's roughly how much unexpected mass we detected said Peter B. James, assistant professor of planetary geophysics at Baylor University. The basin near the bottom of our sole natural satellite is an oval-shaped crater several miles deep and up to 1,242 miles wide, the largest found upon the Moon. Located upon the Moon's far side, also known as the dark side, it never faces the Earth, permanently concealed from the world, it's an ideal place for future investigation by secretive agencies, as the far side would make an ideal location for any base development that one wished to keep hidden from the world. However, the metal object, which is of an incredible size, is yet to be identified, and if it has been found already by secret intelligence upon Earth, it has until now remained unmentioned and as far as anyone knows, unstudied. One of the explanations of this extra mass is that the metal from the asteroid that formed the crater is still embedded in the moon's mantle, said James, adding that the crater is believed to be 4 billion years old, almost as old as Earth itself. This means that if this was indeed left by a craft, the beings who made it would now, if still in existence, be unimaginably more advanced than the modern man of Earth, and could, in all possibility, still be visiting our solar system. Was this crater created by a metallic craft? If so, who were these beings? Were they interdimensional or merely interstellar travelers? It is an anomaly, like many others within our solar system, which we find highly compelling. The fact that the moon rings like a bell when struck has given rise to many conspiracies. The most popular being that the moon is an alien death star or an hollow satellite. However, the answer and even rocks made of the same structure may have been found here on Earth in the US. The mysterious Sonora Stones of Ringing Rocks Park in Upper Black Eddy, Pennsylvania may hold the answer. The earliest published description of the boulder field is dated 1876. The seven-acre boulder field was purchased in 1895 by Abel B. Herring, president of the Union National Bank in Frenchtown. Apparently Herring wished to protect the ringing rocks, even refusing an offer for the right to quarry the stones. An explanation as to how the stones ring remains unclear. In 1965 a group of scientists crushed and sliced the stones to try to come up with an answer. After performing numerous experiments, they found all of the stones from within the field do in fact ring, often in tones lower than human perception. But tonal interaction between these low frequencies can create an audible sound, as if they sing together. The exact mechanism by which they ring still remains elusive, although they suspect it may have something to do with the freeze-thaw cycle that initially formed the boulder field. This drastic freezing and thawing during lunar cycles may indeed be a likely explanation for the moon's resonance. In 1890, a concert was held for the Buckwampum Historical Society. The instruments selected were the stones themselves.
You might say it was the first ever rock concert. The rock field occupies seven acres of an otherwise wooded area, and is over ten feet deep with boulders. If one became tempted to take a stone home as a souvenir, they would soon be disappointed as the rocks lose their musical ability once taken from the other stones. Other isolated areas within Pennsylvania possess these strange stones such as Stony Garden in Bucks County, Ringing Rocks Park near Pottstone, Montgomery County and the Devil's Race Course in Franklin County. But no other places are known to have them. The true cause of the Ringing Stones is still unknown, and a hot topic of debate among geologists, the fact that they lose this ability when separated just adds to their mystery. What do you think gave them their ability to sing? We just oh, received light shepherding spacecraft impact, stations report LOS. The uh, ground stations at Goldstone just reported a Last track is 11.35.35.054 seconds. The shepherding spacecraft has hit the surface of the moon and this marks the end of the L-Cross. China's U-22 rover, currently exploring the surface of our moon, has exposed an intriguing discovery, a mysterious object that many are labeling the hut. It is a cube-shaped curiosity, which oddly just appears to be resting upon the moon, as if once placed. In previous videos, we have examined similar anomalies many believe to be obelisks. We can visit other people with their habitation. We can keep track. If there's something very important to be developed from the moon, together we can explore the moon and develop the moon. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by to comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? With even Buzz Aldrin himself claiming there to be a monolith on Phobos, one of Mars' moons. And there is indeed a mysterious object resting on the surface of this mysterious satellite. A moon which not only appears to be hollow from one side, but is on a decaying orbit which does not make sense almost as if it were a ghost of the past. Earthly calculations revealing that the Moon should have disintegrated into Mars long ago. Yet the Moon still exists, along with its mysterious so-called monolith. Yet I digress. The thing that makes these objects so interesting is how they seemingly appear to have once been placed where they have rested for untold millennia. No contact trail. No debris, dust plume, or disturbance at all. And most importantly, no crater of any form. Unfortunately, however, according to Chinese space officials, it may be a long time before the rover reaches the object, if at all. One major reason is that U-22 isn't active most of the time. The solar-powered spacecraft cannot operate during the 14-and-a-half Earth day-long lunar night nor for roughly 24 hours after sunrise and before sunset. U-22 also stays offline during lunar noon, as temperatures at that time can reach 127 degrees Celsius. What is this object? Further photographic study and detailed research into its precise location needs to be undertaken. It is an object which we find highly compelling. <laughs>